Welcome to SBS News in Easy English. I'm Assam Al-Ghalib. New South Wales has recorded one new local case of COVID-19. It's a man who attended Bondi Junction, Westfield. Premier Gladys Berejiklian says video footage suggests the virus was transmitted through fleeting contact. She says, as a result, the list of exposure sites will be updated and casual contacts may now be deemed close contacts. She says, over the next five days, masks will be mandatory on public transport for residents of Greater Sydney. So we don't want anyone to cancel any events. We don't want anyone uh, to cancel any of those organised ticketed events in particular. Just make sure that whether you're the organiser of the event or you're someone attending, that you stick to those recommendations we've given you and stick to the good COVID safety plans. Those safety plans have worked for us in New South Wales. That if all of us do the right thing, if all of us do the right thing, uh, we're able to get through the next few days without imposing any, any further requirements on our population. Victorians can now travel freely across the state as restrictions ease for Melbourne and regional residents. Melbournians are no longer subject to the 25 kilometres travel limit and can enter regional Victoria for the first time in three weeks after the state's fourth COVID-19 lockdown. Businesses such as gyms and indoor entertainment venues can reopen while density limits at offices, cafes, restaurants and pubs have increased. Masks remain mandatory indoors but are only required outdoors when social distancing is not possible. New Zealand says quarantine-free travel will continue with New South Wales for now, despite the COVID-19 cases reported in Sydney. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern told the Nine Network that may change if there is a lockdown. We stay in really close contact. If they have enough concern to impose restrictions or to uh, themselves go um, into a form of, of lockdown, then we then respond at our border. Um, but as you can see at the moment, keeping watching briefs, staying in touch with health officials, uh, of course telling travellers that if they are covered by areas of interest, then they need to remain uh, isolated uh, over in Australia rather than travelling. But at the moment, we're, we're keeping travelling moving with New South Wales. Chief Health Officer Paul Kelly is reassuring Australians that coronavirus vaccines are safe after a cautious lift in the age recommendation for AstraZeneca. The federal government's vaccine rollout will now offer people under 60 Pfizer after new advice from the expert panel on immunization. More than 840,000 people under 60 who have received their first dose of AstraZeneca are being encouraged not to cancel second jab appointments. Government front bencher Peter Dutton told the Nine Network the small risk of rare blood clotting is greatly reduced with the second dose. The advice is very clear in relation to those people who have had the first jab and not had an adverse reaction, that there should be no doubt about them getting the second jab. And that's incredibly important, particularly for people over the age of 70. And that advice uh, we adhere to. Doctors around the country are saying exactly that, and people should talk to their GP. International students are being allowed to return to South Australia after the federal government approved a quarantine facility. Existing buildings at Perrofield Airport in Adelaide's north will be used to quarantine up to 160 students. Hotels in the CBD will continue to be used by Australians returning from overseas. South Australian Chief Public Health Officer Nicola Spurier says the facility is appropriate and well-ventilated. She promised a detailed security protocol would be developed. 
34-year-old Baiki gang member Bilal Hamzi has died in what police have called an execution-style murder in Sydney City last night. He is the cousin of Brothers for Life founder and prison inmate Bassam Hamzi. Hamzi was treated at the scene for multiple gunshot wounds but died after being taken to St. Vincent's Hospital. Homicide Squad Commander Detective Superintendent Danny Doherty says police are exploring the possibility the shooting was a result of a rivalry between bikey gangs. This was a brutal execution-style murder and it was carried out in a busy street in the middle of Sydney CBD. It was extremely fortunate that members of the public were injured. Detectives will now explore a number of inquiries, including ongoing conflict uh, between rival families and organised crime networks. I'm Assam Al-Ghalib. This is SBS News in Easy English.